Hello, hello. Welcome to today's webinar. We're going to give everyone a few minutes to get settled. I'm Morgan. Um, I'm VP of Marketing here at Radiant. We're so excited for this webinar today. We're going to talk about all the amazing apps for restaurants in our marketplace. We can't wait to show them all off to you. Um, in the meantime, uh, feel free to use the chat on your screen to say hello. Let us know where you're dialing in from. Let us know which apps you're excited to hear about. Anything that you want to take away from the webinar, this is your chance to say hello and make an introduction. We are so excited to hear from you. And again, we're going to let everyone get settled for just another minute or two, and I will go ahead and drop a message on the chat um, to invite everyone to say hello and introduce themselves. All right, we'll give it one more minute. We've got about 50 people plus flowing in. We had hundreds of people sign up for this webinar. So really excited to see everyone's questions um, for you to learn from each other and to make this a great event. So again, we'll give everyone just a few more uh, seconds to get settled. Feel free to refill your water, whatever you're doing. Um, take that quick break and then we'll get rolling in just one more minute. Okay, so I think we are going to go ahead and get started. Um, welcome, welcome, everyone. Again, if you haven't yet jumped on the chat, um, feel free to use that at any point throughout the event today. We'd love to hear where you're dialing in from, uh, what you're excited to learn from today. Um, you can choose to toggle to send that message to all um, hosts and attendees, for example, and make sure the group can see all of your message. Uh, so we'll go ahead and repost that. Um, you can send it to everyone is what you were going to see. Whoops. Um, let me go ahead and grab this. This is the message I want. Perfect. All right. Um, so we're going to jump into today's webinar. We're going to start with a few uh, quick overviews of the agenda. Um, ultimately, we're going to uh, make sure we maximize the time to show off our most popular restaurant apps uh, so that you can learn from Radiant, think about how to maximize the platform, how to make sure you're using everything in the ecosystem to run your business more effectively and to create a more amazing restaurant experience. So we will dive in and start with some quick introductions. Um, again, I'm Morgan. I run our uh, marketing team here at Radiant. I'm going to introduce all of our awesome speakers from our product team, uh, starting with Anthony. I'll pass it over to you. Uh, say hello. Let us know what team you're on and anything else you'd like to share. Thank you, Morgan. Hello, everyone. Anthony Din here, uh, product manager on the DX developer experience team. And um, next we have Bob. Hi everyone, my name is Fung. Um, I'm a pro program manager on the EU product team. Um, I've been with Radiant um, since last December um, and I work on um, third party apps. And I'll head it on to Priya. Hi everyone, my name is Priya. I'm a program manager as well on the DX third party side. So I work very closely with Fung and I have been here only for the last couple months. So I'm really excited to chat with you all today. And um, I'll hand it over to Ben. Yeah, thanks so much, Priya. Hi, everyone. My name is Ben McLaughlin. I'm uh, also in the product management team, uh, working with our third party uh, app developers uh, with Fung, Priya, and Anthony, and really happy to be here with you today. Thank you. Awesome. So let's go ahead and dive in. Um, for those of you who are joining who maybe haven't heard about Radiant in the past, um, wanted to give a quick refresher. We'll also have the opportunity at the end to uh, raise a hand if you want to learn more about Radiant and request a demo from our team. But uh, just a quick look. Um, again, Radiant is the one-step shop, the go-to platform for creating an amazing restaurant experience. Um, we start with opportunities to bring traffic into your restaurant through amazing um, outdoor signage and opportunities for people to learn about your brand. Um, once they come in store, we're all about creating that amazing restaurant experience. And we're engaging customers at point of purchase through digital menu boards, through self-service kiosks, and all the awesome apps we're going to talk about as a team today. And um, we're also introducing a ton of amazing um, employee engagement solutions for motivating, celebrating, and inspiring your back office teams, whether they're um, wait staff um, at the cashier stand in the kitchen. We're going to talk about a lot of the apps today that help keep those teams organized, your food safe, and teams connected. 
And then last but not least, um, we're rolling out a ton of exciting stuff on the customer analytics side to make sure that you're measuring the impact that all of the marketing and signage and amazing things you're doing in your restaurant is paying off with regards to increased sales. So that's what we're about. Um, we have lots of more exciting content and announcements coming this year. So please continue to stay connected with our team. So at a glance, um, what are some of the ways that we show up? I spoke to some of these already, but when we think about um, everything that you can do with Radiant under your roof, um, it starts with digital menus, promotional signage. Maybe you have an amazing limited time offer that you want to showcase. Maybe you want to set the mood with music and entertainment. We're going to talk through some of those options today. Um, maybe you want to expedite checkout and reduce burden on your cashiers so they can be empowered to do other things and uh, make it easier for people to place orders with you. And of course, for the back of the house, um, thinking about games, contests, recognition and awards, and some of the things we'll show off today are around communication, scheduling, and safety updates. Um, stay tuned. We're actually going to have a webinar dedicated to all the things we're doing on the employee engagement front later in August. So if that's piquing your interest already, we'll have a lot more to come at that time. Um, we're working with brands really big and small, um, whether you are just getting started, maybe with one restaurant, maybe one food truck, uh, thinking about expanding all the way to really large um, multi-location franchise-driven restaurants. That's our sphere at the end of the day. Um, if we're not already working together, we would love to work with you and ultimately really proud of the, the 10 out of 10 rating we get from many clients like Matt here on screen. Um, we want to, at the end of the day, um, help you create an amazing restaurant experience, reduce the stress that maybe comes with managing all the marketing and content across your locations, and really give you the opportunity to increase sales through bringing your brand to life in a meaningful way. So um, just onward from learning about Radiant, we want to dive in and talk through some of the apps that we're going to showcase today. I'm going to start with a quick poll. I'll run that now on screen. Uh, this is going to help us really understand what you're here to learn about today, what you're excited about. Um, maybe you're interested in learning about menu board um, apps. Maybe you're interested in um, entertainment apps for maybe uh, keeping kids distracted at a family sit down restaurant or entertaining people coming to your brewery or bar. Um, maybe you're looking for ways to showcase social media content on all your feeds, um, maybe looking for video and other streaming options, or even ways that you can better um, empower your team to design and create all the signage and menus that would happen at your restaurant. So we'll let this run for another 30 seconds or so. And then we'll go ahead and share the results back with you. So far, I'm seeing a lot of interest around menu boards. About 50% of you are here today to learn about that. I'm seeing a lot of interest in employee engagement apps. Good to know. We've got a ton of that coming soon to share with you, as well as some interest on the social media side and streaming TV. Um, if you haven't been closely uh, Connected with Radiant, we launched a really exciting uh, tool and platform just this week. Um, it's called Radiant TV, and it's going to let you have really beautifully curated video streams that can play through um, in your restaurant, in your cafe, especially as people are hanging out and spending time there, um, whether it's news, whether it's fashion updates, whether it's food and bev, we've got a ton of amazing content there, so more to come. All right, I'm going to end the poll, uh, share this back so everyone can see. Uh, we'll definitely, like I said, spend time on mini boards and employee engagement. That is what a lot of people are excited to see today. So thank you for that quick poll. All right, so we are going to get it started. Um, the flow of the, the day today is going to be first and foremost thinking about um, front of house offerings and what you're going to show to your customers. We're going to cover um, some really cool entertainment apps. We're going to cover menu boards. And then Priya will bring us home with all the things related to employee engagement. And um, we're going to have a few of our, our, our speakers kind of take turns here. So we'll be switching back and forth between some high level info as well as the actual demo. So you can see how easy it is to set this up in the platform. So that'll be uh, the flow for today. Um, I'm noticing that there might be some challenges of people using the chat. Um, sorry about that. If that's if that's happening for you, um, please use the Q&A. Um, that does seem to be working. The Q&A is going to be in that um, black Zoom toolbar. Um, you'll be able to easily add questions there. I'm happy to um, jump in and have our speakers take moments to pause, answer your questions are on the way. So please use that as a tool to queue your questions, to upvote questions you're excited about, and we'll be making sure to cover those as we go through the content. 
So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and pass it to Fong. Uh, she's going to kick us off um, with some of those um, apps for front house, um, all the entertainment happening at your restaurant. And we're going to start with Airviews. Fong, I'll pass it to you. Thank you, Morgan. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Fung. Um, so I'll be covering um, the apps that you would um, captivate your customers when they enter your business, either if it's a restaurant, um, a doctor's office, any kind of business. Um, the first app we have is Airviews. Airviews is um, a business that shows you clips um, of drone shots around the world. It could be um, a mixture of travel, nature, action, action sports. But the cool thing is that um, it's shot in 4K footage. And um, with the action sports, you see these explosive, explosive um, shots that um, come in and out of the one, the, the person that's in the center. Um, and it's great for bars. It, it's great for waiting areas. And then um, any, any place that are family friendly restaurants. And then I think that the next two apps are um, ones that um, I think the audience is most interested in um, are menu boards. So we have um, Tap Hunter Evergreen. Um, they are a business that do digital menu boards designed for bars, breweries, and you guys can create beautiful customized menus or even use um, the pre-made templates. Um, the cool thing is that they have a database of all the beers, all the um, um, mixed drinks that, that you can already list a description. Um, and then whatever you list onto um, the admin menu can be displayed on the digital signage. Um, one thing I wanted to share that is this, is this business is used by Lagunita, Stone, Sammy Adams, so major breweries um, around the US. Um, it's great for beer gardens, sports bars, and breweries. I just wanted to make a quick check in too. I should be screen sharing. Are you guys all seeing my slides though? Yes. Okay, great. Just wanted to be sure. Thank you. And then um, DS Menu. Um, DS Menu um, is very similar to um, Evergreen um, Tab Hunter where it is also um, where you can um, custom design um, menus for your business. Um, they have um, really amazing templates. They have over a hundred templates and you can customize a base on either, either if it's um, based on a Chinese restaurant or a Mexican restaurant, or if you have a holiday special, um, there's different templates that you can use. Um, you can modify the templates to match your brand. Um, and there is very little effort for you to do uh, to create the menu is either just entering your items. And then whenever you have an update on your admin menu, um, the digital signage will update that as well. And I am more than happy to share my screen to give you an example of what we just discussed. Yeah, well, um, Fong's getting that set up. Um, feel free to keep those questions rolling in the QA. Um, we're really excited to show more of what these look like in real life. And just to recap, um, we'll go through uh, the air views first, which is going to be the 4K drone footage, super exciting background content, especially if you're a bar or restaurant, um, anything where people are going to be hanging out, especially for long amounts of time. And then both DS menu and tap hunter are going to be kind of the first of our static and standard menus that we'll go through today. So yeah, Fong, take it away. Thanks, Morgan. So this is um, the but there's the ability to play sound. Um, we have action sports here. Um, action sports can be displayed at bars, um, restaurants, um, where they have these amazing shots through drone, through these sports cars, um, other, other categories you can select. Um, let's look at travel. I love travel. Um, we have China, Sichuan. Um, so it's amazing, really, really clear video drone footages, and um, I would expect to see this at any waiting areas for either a doctor's office. Um, but yeah, super, super cool shots, and um, you can customize based on the category that you like. And 
And, and just to clarify, Fung, too, this is going to be um, all drone footage, of course. It'll be really curated, right? So it won't be maybe just the shot of the Ferris wheel I think I saw a moment ago. That'll kind of change out with new content in a long reel, if that's correct, yeah. right? Cool. Exactly. Thanks for clarifying that. Yeah, right. and um, the good news here, as you'll see, as we're going through the dashboard, this might be actually the first time some of you all are seeing the Radiant dashboard. So <laughs> um, I wanted to take a quick moment there and call out that uh, the beauty of Radiant, and of course, if you're excited to really get your hands on a live demo, we'll take a poll at the end for you to reach out to our team, is that you can organize um, a whole playlist um, of any type of content that you want. So if you wanted to show the drone footage for say a minute or two, and then switch to show your latest happy hour special, that's all possible in our platform without you ever having to worry about touching it or messing around with USBs or anything else going on behind the scenes. So um, as you think about all the apps you see today, also think about their relationship and how you might want them to show up in a sequence on a single screen or multiple screens. But uh, that just wanted to pause there. Fong, feel free yeah. to continue. No problem. Thanks for clarifying. Um, next, let's go through Tab Hunter. Um, Tab Hunter. Um, the uh, how you would use this is you would grab the customer ID and you would paste paste it here, and then this menu will be um, created. And how you would create this menu is all of um, um, Tab Hunter user have an admin um, website where they would log in. Um, and you would be able to design your digital menu here. Right now, since I'm displaying device four and on the dashboard, I'm displaying de device four, um, the, uh, the beer menu would be displayed. Um, the other thing is if you want to add your brand to um, the back of the design, you're able to do that. Um, right now I'm listing out beverages and only beers and I want to display tap numbers, um, ABV, style, producer name. And let's say you have um, a new shipment and you want to have um, Bud Light. Um, this is already listed into their database where you can just add that um, into your menu. And they already have the description added. So this is something that they use to offer to their customers so that it reduces the amount of work of you adding the um, ABV or what kind of beer it is. Um, and then, yeah, this is the food menu. Um, you have the option to have either food, beer, any kind of menus you like. Awesome. I love the database aspect of it, Fong, and being able to like tap into, you know, you don't have to recreate these menu items. You don't have to recreate all the, the calorie content and the ABV and all the things, right? That's going to already be in the database. So it's really just about syncing your menu with their database and making it really easy to, to change and customize that dynamic menu. Yeah. Um, I did have a quick question, Fong, more related to air views. Um, uh, an attendee coming in from SoCal has a question about bandwidth um, and what is recommended from a bandwidth perspective to make sure that that video really kind of flows through flawlessly. Um, in terms of bandwidth, I think I would have to check the notes to um, be clear of what kind of internet is required, but this is um, preferred if you play this on um, 1080 or higher because um, since these shots are in very high quality, um, we want um, we want to have a very seamless view. Um, so if the customer has standard internet and displaying this in 1080p, um, that is the rec recommended um, view for using air views. Awesome, yeah. Um, good to know, and the attendee who asked that, feel free to also, again, at the end, raise a hand if you want more of a one-on-one -on -one demo and conversation around bandwidth. We're happy to do that after the event. So, yeah. Cool. All right. Um, I am going to switch to DS Menu. Um, DS Menu, it's super easy to use on our dashboard as well. Um, all you are grabbing is the URL ID. And with DS Menu, you also have an admin um, portal where you would log in. And um, like I mentioned earlier, there's so many templates that DS Menu have. Um, these are the pre-made that they have listed either from 
um, chalkboard offers. And then if you if you are a sandwich shop, you can click on sandwich. They give you the option to select some of the designs that they have already. Um, if you want to celebrate St. Patrick's Day, um, these are the menus they have for um, St. Patrick themes. And um, in terms of um, your own design, you have the ability to create a brand new design. If you want to display it on horizontal or vertical, you create one and then you have the ability to design and custom made. And they have food images um, where you can select and search for food images. And this is just like a um, kind of the creative spot of you if you want to create anything from scratch. Um, I think the, the coolest thing is um, whatever you update and you publish on this admin board, um, it will be published on here. Um, so you wouldn't need to come back and copy and paste a new URL ID. Um, it will be automated, updated once you um, hit publish. And all you're grabbing is this last five digits here. You grab those five digits and then um, just grab this one just so I can show you. And then it's displayed. I love that. So I think just to highlight again, because we're going to show a lot of different menus over the next few minutes, especially once Anthony comes up next. Um, DS menu is a really great option if you're someone who maybe is running um, a smaller, uh, smaller franchise or doesn't have a uh, maybe super explicit brand style guide yet, but you want to bring in and tap into templates that are really easy to update, um, really easy to self-serve. You don't have to have, as you saw here with Bong's demonstration, you know, graphic design background. You can let the temp template do the work for you. So this is a really exciting opportunity. And um, there have been some questions about pricing. And um, what's also nice about DS Menu is it's kind of a one-time flat rate versus a monthly spend. So you can pay as you need new menus and then you can continue to leverage that menu until you need edits again. So um, a lot of the pricing is actually gonna be available on our website. Um, I'll put that link into the chat in just a moment, but on radiant.com. And then if you go to the marketplace, um, a lot of the monthly pricing, um, if apps do require that, some of them are free. Um, to the question around um, those coming in on the Q&A. Um, that's listed there, or if anything is kind of a custom pricing, that's where we'd recommend uh, reaching out to our team for more specifics and quotes. Um, a few other questions, Fong, before we pass it over to Anthony that are coming through. Um, someone is kind of new to Radiant, and they're just kind of confirming that, you know, we are a platform that helps you uh, manage and display, you know, widgets like all the ones you're showing. Um, yes, that is the case. Like I mentioned earlier, the beauty of Radiant is you have this huge marketplace of apps that you can tap into. You can then um, schedule those in what we call a playlist to show over time and to um, kind of organize in the order that you like. So it's a really powerful way to show a curation of messages, content, dynamic feeds from our partners, um, and build the playlist of your dreams, if you will, whether that's on just one screen or on many screens throughout your many restaurants. And everything's managed from the cloud, which means that if you want to make any changes, you might not be at your restaurant on site. You can update that from your laptop from thousands of miles away, and it will push through our um, internet-connected um, hardware devices. So the um, answer or the question is, you know, do you need specific TV or hardware? Um, you do use a Radiant screen ray, or if you are a BrightSign customer, we actually just launched an integration with them where our software runs on their hardware, which is very exciting. And then really no specific TVs, as long as you have an HDMI port, we can integrate with that. So I'm um, really flexible in that way too, especially for people who maybe already have existing TVs or want to be um, in control of like the spending there. And then um, the last question, Jared, I think we're going to cover in Anthony's section. Jared's asking if we can integrate videos within the menus on the same screen. Um, yes, that is absolutely possible. It might be that Anthony can show some of those off as well. So uh, thanks, everyone, for the amazing questions, keeping it active, um, keep them coming through the Q&A. And yeah, um, Fong, if you are all set, we can switch over to Anthony's section next. I'll go ahead and get my screen share going again, and we will press on. Okay. 
All right, panelists, let me know if you can't see my screen. Otherwise, give me a thumbs up. We're going to go forward and I'll pass it over to Anthony. All right, thanks again, Morgan. Um, hi, everyone. So I have a couple of restaurant menu solutions that I'd like to share with you. Uh, first up, we have the Square menu app, um, which allows restaurant owners to create dynamic digital menus uh, that is powered by their Square point of sale data. Um, <clears throat> this menu is perfect for restaurants who want the ability to be able to update menu items and prices and availability, availability in real time. Um, and those restaurants who have very minimal branding guidelines. Uh, some key features of this app are the ability to schedule your breakfast, lunch, dinner, and happy hour menus um, at specific times. You can also easily manage menus across multiple locations, whether it be 10 locations or 10,000 locations. Um, and best of all, it doesn't require any programming on your part. Um, basically, anyone can come in here and set up their menu. Uh, currently, we're also integrated with other popular point of sale uh, providers such as Clover, Toast, Parbrink, uh, Revel, and Lightspeed. And um, that is basically the overview of this menu. So uh, the next thing we have is our on-brand menu API for Toast. <clears throat> Sorry. So basically, this is a menu um, that is part of the uh, developer portal. I'm sorry, it's a feature that's part of the developer portal platform. Uh, it allows brand conscious customers to create 100% on brand menus that is powered by their Toast uh, menu data. Um, some features include full creative control of the, uh, the menu so uh, that your developer can adhere to any branding guidelines that you may have. Also, um, it's easy to be able to uh, upload images as well as embed videos, which is one of the questions from um, the audience. And then also we have a simplified data model that makes it very easy for your developer to uh, pull down our data and utilize that to uh, create their on-brand uh, menus. And also as part of the <clears throat> beta program, uh, you get a free pass for the first six months and the pricing is $49 a month per location after that. Awesome, I'll just build on that. And actually, um, Anthony, I'll go ahead and take off my screen share so you can get set up. Um, what we're gonna do is just recap quickly. There's a few different types of digital menus that we just discussed. So the first is gonna be the standard or the static menu, apologies that um, Fong presented. So really easy templates, choose one that meets your brand, pay a one-time fee, it's live on your TVs, you're good to go. Um, the dynamic menus is what Anthony's talking through. So if you are on a point of sale, like the ones we mentioned, and you want to have real-time immediate pricing changes, real-time inventory updates, if you 86 an item, you want it to come off your screen immediately so that you don't have to tape over something or apologize to a customer because, hey, we ran out of the you know Caesar salad today. Um, that would just immediately come off your menu. It's gonna make it really um, low stress for your uh, staff at the front of the house. And then it gives you that opportunity, especially with changes and supply chain and pricing and inflation. Um, if you need to change a price, you can do that in a moment. You just have to update that in your point of sale and it's gonna immediately publish to your digital mini boards again across thousands of locations without you having to be there in person. So. We are super excited. Um, we are one of the only, if not only, um, partners in the space right now doing this. Um, we've worked really hard, uh, everyone on this call, to launch these partnerships with all of these point of sale providers. And we're really excited for you to take advantage of it. And just the last little highlight, as Anthony mentioned, um, we are rolling out the on-brand API for those of you who have maybe um, multi-location, you have really established brand guidelines, you wanna have something be pixel perfect to your style guide and also be dynamically updating. Um, we are offering that as a free beta for the next six months. So if you are a Toast customer or a Revel customer, you can have fully free API access, work with our team and your developers to build that menu, test it out, be part of our feedback program, we're really excited to bring on what might be another 10 to 15 customers for that. So please uh, stay in touch after the event if that's exciting to you. Great, um, Anthony, I'll pass it over to you for the demos. Thank you. Thank you, Morgan. Um, so currently we are looking at the square menu. It is in the Radiant dashboard. Uh, what the operator can do is come in here and 
uh, once connected, they can select from their available locations, um, as well as the available categories that are pulled from Square. Um, once a specific category is selected, you then have your category details. Uh, you can choose whether or not you want to display uh, certain details, such as, let's say I wanted to display the burger modifiers. Um, you can see that they've populated here, but being that is a digital menu, it probably doesn't make sense to display the modifiers. Um, so I'll just remove that clutter, but I can go ahead and add my calories. So under the half pound burger, you can see that the calorie is displayed. Also I have the ability to um, display or hide specific items. So I can just go ahead and remove the half pound burger and now it's gone. And then also you can choose your treatment of how out of stock items are displayed. You can either leave it as is, remove it, or display it with a, with a strike through. So over here on the presentation, you can see that the 16 ounce, 16 ounce steak has been um, crossed out. And you have the ability to format your pricing either by um, providing a currency or selecting um, how many decimals you want to display. You can also upload a, um, an image to your menu and you can either animate it or you can leave it unanimated. Um, also, you can flip the orientation and move it to the right side if you wish. Also, there's the ability to add a QR code. Um, if you don't already have one, then all you have to do is enter a URL and the QR code will automatically be generated, or you can go ahead and upload one if you have one um, available. And then lastly, there's the ability to uh, customize your theme. So here we can select from one of the available system themes. I currently have the chalkboard theme selected, <clears throat> or I can go ahead and create my own custom theme. I've uploaded a custom font. I've selected a font color and a background color. And if I go ahead and change my image, you can see that I can get pretty close to parity with my branding um, for my company or restaurant. Any questions there? We have a few coming through the Q&A, Anthony, if you don't mind. Um, just also, sure. I think, understanding the differences between DS menu and some of the um, ones that you're um, answering now. So one question came from David. Um, does DS menu integrate with POS system like Toast? Um, no, uh, that would be more of a static menu. So it's going to be created as a, a template and it's going to be still or static, meaning it's not dynamically updated. But while um, we're demoing this now for Square, um, which is launching very soon. This is kind of a sneak peek for everybody. Actually, we'll be officially launching Square in just a, another few weeks. Um, we do have that ability to do the dynamic menu with Toast. So David, if you're liking what you're seeing here or even in the on-brand API, that's the option for Toast. Um, would love to connect with you after the event. Um, we're also getting some questions about different types of templates. Um, two uh, attendees have actually wrote in around like cannabis, uh, maybe your dispensary. Um, I'm assuming there's probably quite a few templates um, in that arena. Maybe Fong can quickly speak to that for DS menu or Anthony, if you know. But really at the end of the day, the beauty is you can customize this to whatever you're interested in, but not sure if either of you have a comment on if you're a cannabis dispensary and what opportunities look like there. Yeah, as far as templates go, we actually also have um, design services. If you don't have anyone in-house that uh, you can request um, a design service that will quickly turn around um, any designs that um, you know you desire. So there is um for DS menu, there is um, a template for um, cannabis. Um, but maybe in the future, um, if that is a request that can be, um, some future partnerships that might happen um, um, since we are we are working a lot with different partners and um, that some that is something that we are looking into as well. Awesome. And then uh, David asked quickly just about APIs. We're going to cover that next. Um, thinking about the developer API and the menu APIs, so that will be coming soon. Uh, thanks, Anthony. Just wanted to take a pause there, but feel free to continue. 
Great. So uh, we'll move on to the on-brand menu API. It consists of kind of like three parts. Um, this is the developer portal where your developer will come in to configure the custom menu. Um, first, you have your URL section where you can specify the URL that will um, pull in from your custom web app that your developer creates, and that will then be displayed in the presentation. Uh, then next you have your inputs. The uh, inputs that are supported are a select dropdown or text uh, or number inputs as well as uh, an on-off toggle. Over here, you can see that we have a locations input um, that prompts the user for the location that they wish to display the menu for. Um, that actually maps to a menu ID. Uh, <clears throat> so based on the user's selection, we then go ahead and dynamically insert that menu ID uh, via URL parameter into the URL. And that infor informs the app which menu and for which location should be displayed. The second part of the equation is the uh, custom app itself. Again, that is developed by your developer. Um, as you can see here in the URL, it specifies the menu ID. Um, and then the third part is the actual menu itself that is uh, represented in our uh, dashboard. So um, this is a little bit more of a free form a layout, you know, uh, as compared to the standard app, which is a little bit more structured and more column uh, based. This one has two columns uh, with the espresso and coffee categories on the left and the ice cold brew on the right. Um, both columns have the menu name as well as the calories and the pricing. Uh, the difference is the column on the right also has the item image. Uh, we also have a section on the bottom here for uh, flavor add-ons. And um, the developer has also implemented the ability for um, the operator to include a heading at the top and the bottom. So you can see here, made to order is displayed at the top and the bottom heading is calories based on large sizes. There's also a footer that you can add. Um, and here is the location dropdown that I referenced before. So based on the selection, the proper menu will be displayed for that location. Any questions? One okay. kind of related one, Anthony, that may be covered on the menu API or even in some of our more standard or static menus. Um, one other question I missed, um, again, from David is, can we load our own custom files? Like, for example, tap handle stickers. Um, you know, if you're at a brewery and you want to really show the art from the tap handle, can you speak to um, how kind of custom images come to play and what the capabilities are? Yes. So currently um, in our roadmap, we do have the ability to pull custom item images from um, the point of sale API. But uh, for now, as far as... Um, you know, embedding images or videos, that is up to the creative control of the developer. For example, these three item images here um, have sort of been like coded into uh, the menu. These are not dynamically pulled from the API. Got it. That answers your question. Yeah, um, but I think what you're answering is um, there's creative freedom here, right? So if you're wanting to bring in exactly. art, um, you can do that. Um, in addition to what might be available in the point of sale. But yeah, we want to make sure that these are really brand beautiful, brand forward menu opportunities that you get to customize, um, including um, really strong graphics. Like for example, here, as you're seeing with the cold brew and the um, salted caramel cream. Exactly. And again, this uh, this menu, you know, um, was inspired by the Starbucks menu. Um, and for example, if we want to make an update to the item as far as promoting an item or um, reducing the price so that we can boost the sales. We can do that. Um, what you do is you go into your toast dashboard into the ice cold brew category. Um, let's say I wanted to make the salted caramel the same price as the other two. And then I wanted to promote that so for more visibility. I will move it to the top. And after I publish it, we'll hop back into the menu. <clears throat> um, 
we'll check out site A. And you can see that the salted caramel is still in the bottom with the original pricing. But if I hop back to site B, you will see that it has moved to the top with the new pricing. Awesome. And the key thing here too is that this is all happening just in your point of sale um, as you hit publish. That is immediately, you know, publishing through to those TV screens, whether you have 30 locations or you have one, or if you have thousands of locations, it's really easy to manage by mapping the exact um, location naming of whatever your point of sale is with regards to how you're designating your restaurants. So we make it really easy to manage as well, even if you have multiple locations across the world. Good point, Morgan. And um, just wanted to point out these changes happen pretty much instantaneously uh, via a webhook. So within about like 30 seconds or so, uh, your men menus should update. Awesome. So the next thing um, we can do is Let's say for whatever reason, you wanted to remove an item from your menu completely. Uh, let's say it wasn't selling, it wasn't popular. So we're gonna go ahead and remove the cold brew coffee. I'll hit remove. And after I publish the change, again, if we check out site A, You'll see that the cold brew is still there, but back in site B, it has been completely removed, not only the item, but actually the uh, item image that is attached to the item description itself has been removed. And the um, cold brew coffee with milk has been moved up. It has been shifted up to kind of fill out that void. Awesome. And Andy, and for, if I'm wrong, but um, you also have the option to do a strike through. Is that correct? If you want to still show that the menu item exists, but maybe you run out of it. Is that exactly great? Yep. So sorry. So for um, items that have been um, that are out of stock, this is again up to the developer's um, creative control where they can choose to either uh, completely, re completely remove the item or strike through or even display it with like an, a sold out or um, you know, out of stock banner. Awesome. Thank you, Anthony. Um, feel free to, from the audience, uh, drop any more questions in. We're still taking those through the Q&A, but um, the last question we have about menus before we hand off to Priya next uh, to start talking through some employee engagement offerings. Um, Kathy had a question about, can you create a printable PDF version of the menu? Um, maybe on the DS menu side, uh, there's an opportunity to get that as well, or if either Anthony or Fong want to speak to that, that would be great. But I would imagine that's probably possible. Yes, you can. Um, there is the ability to download as a PDF um, or download as a URL, um, and you can put that into print as well. Awesome. Thank you. And then we did get one more uh, question coming through, Anthony, before we totally let you go. Um, he's asking, um, or they're asking, does the original content in place um, on the screen stay intact when the changes are being made in content through the dashboard? So um, it seems to be like just making sure there's version control of until we're truly ready to hit publish, like nothing's changing right in the live environment. It's just once we're ready to hit publish, even if you're saving some changes that haven't hit publish yet, it will not impact the live screen. Correct. That's correct for toast. Yep. For toast. Um, it depends on the. Um, implementation. So as far as like other uh, point of sale um, dashboards, some of them do not require a publish in order for changes to take place. Once you hit save, uh, it goes live. So just have to be careful and um, aware of that. Okay, that makes sense. All right, Anthony, I'll take back over screen sharing and we are going to move into the back uh, back of the house, literally the back section of this presentation. Um, Priya is going to walk through some really exciting uh, capabilities related to scheduling, related to food safety, all those amazing things. But just another quick reminder that we are in this beta uh, project right now. If you're a Toast customer, if you're a Rebel customer, please give us a shout. Um, you can do that by saying yes when we run the poll at the end. We'd love to bring you into this program and uh, gift you with six months of free API access. That's a $50 per month per location savings. Um, you get to be our, part of our feedback loop, help us shape this product and take advantage of some savings in the short term. All right, Priya, I'll pass it over to you. 
Yeah. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Morgan. Thank you, Anthony. My name is Priya. I'm so excited to talk to you all about back of house apps. And as Morgan mentioned, these are apps that you want for employees, management staff, things to really overall improve productivity and employee engagement, which is super important. Um, I will be going through about four apps today and then demoing them. So if you ever need a refresh on what I'm showing, just let us know in the chat and um, I'm happy to elaborate. So to start off, let's start with everyone's favorite, which is food. <laughs> so let's start off with Finium. Finium is a food safety solution that uses automation, behavioral sciences, and technology in order to really display safe food temperatures. Now, what does that mean? <laughs> their app works by essentially providing you food safety information that is taken from their sensor devices, and then they display that in the kitchen. So if you think about it, it's true value point is really that it allows staff to know instantly and directly if food is in danger of going bad without your staff members having to pull out their phones and Google, what's the safe temperature that chicken can be stored at? Um, so not only is that annoying and it can also disrupt rush hour flows at different restaurants, but it also is pretty unsanitary to handle your food and your phone at the same time. So overall, this app is a fantastic solution to really manage food safety and food waste as a whole. That is all I have for Finium. So I can move on to Blue Dot. And I think just to clarify too for Finium, um, where this would show up is imagine in your kitchen, you have either a small or a larger TV screen dedicated to these back of house apps. That way, again, just like Priya said, you don't have to jump on your phone. You don't have to touch anything. They just have to look up, you know, have a TV screen that's generally visible for the staff. And then uh, the Finium content can be playing either exclusively on a dedicated screen, or it could be in a playlist in relationship with other content that you want to show the staff at any given point. But uh, making sure that's like eye-friendly, easy TV installation, and that's how you would actually work with Radiant to get that into action. Cool. Thank you. So next up on the theme of food and order placement is Blue Dot. So this is an amazing app that utilizes geofencing technology to create, to track, and to fulfill orders placed by customers. Um, geofencing, when I heard of it, went you know just completely over my head. So when I um, explain, when I say in this case, geofencing really refers to creating a virtual geographic boundary around your establishment that enables the software in your app or your web ordering system to trigger a response whenever a mobile device enters that area. And to be more specific here, the Radiant integration involves something called a Hello screen, which you can literally think of as a giant dashboard for the store to be instantly alerted of customers approach and arrival. So this really is a fantastic way to monitor and to optimize your curbside pickup. Um, so it's just a really great solution as a whole. Yeah, if anyone has ever been like, hey, I ordered my coffee a long time ago and when I showed up, it was cold, for example, um, this is a really great tool for you. It helps your staff optimize like when they start production of an item, especially if an item is not going to travel very well or it needs to be served at a really specific temperature. Um, as we know that they're approaching and driving closer to the restaurant, they might have made their order online, but the staff doesn't have to prepare it until they're maybe like a five minute drive away or within the next one to two minutes of arrival. So as Priya mentioned, like really helpful for efficiency and also making sure that the end product that you're giving to the consumer is fresh and hot and all the things. Yeah, so we've covered food, we've covered order placement, so we can branch out a little bit more into the apps that help you lead and engage your employees. So we have Employee Metrics, which is a very unique app that is really bringing transparency and accessibility to the whole world of labor compliance. Um, I know when you first hear that word labor compliance, it sounds very intimidating, it may go in one ear out the other, um, but that's really what I love about this app, you know. It means that managing your business is so much more easier now in accordance with labor laws. And that just makes this so much more accessible as a whole. So I think the two features that are very important with employee metrics are number one, it's customizability. Um, I can demo this a little bit more later on so y'all will be able to see what I'm talking about. But this app lets you display break times and lunch times in accordance with your current state's labor laws. Um, 
these times can really vary as we know state by state. So the customer has that ability to configure this app based on their state's labor laws. I'll give you an example in California and I believe in New York, um, we have a rule saying that you must take a break by your sixth hour or your clock out um, or else you're you know, in violation of labor laws. So that's something you can choose to highlight on your app so everyone is aware. The second feature is its integration capabilities. This app works by integrating your timekeeping system within the app. So you know you can import all your employees. And if you don't have one, employee metrics will actually create one for you, which really allows for a seamless experience as a whole. Okay, and then uh, the last one on the theme of scheduling is time well scheduled. So this is a time and attendance solution that really helps manage employee schedules. And this includes things like tracking schedules, absences, cover time, um, and it also offers a lot of features that can really easily integrate with your payroll, which is great. Um, and all the scheduling customization is actually done within your time well scheduled account. So if you run a business and you're sick of that one employee insisting, oh, I never knew I was scheduled for Friday night, I swear, I didn't see it, um, then this one's for you. So this is a really great scheduling solution. Um, and just to elaborate more on what I'm talking about, I can go ahead and demo these apps now. Great, I will give you share access. All right, thank you, Priya, excited to see these in action. You're getting a lot of love on uh, Finium as well. <laughs> <laughs> sure, can everyone see my screen with like the, um, yep. the Finium? Yep, yep. Okay, perfect. So this is Finium, remember it's a food safety app. This app is pretty straightforward to use. It works by you entering your API key over here. Your API key is just a form of authentication. Um, it's pretty simple to get. And then from there, you can specify if you want this in front of house or back of house. And then you can also indicate your temperature unit in Fahrenheit or Celsius. This is also really helpful if you like have an international market. Um, for example, in Europe, they use Celsius. <laughs> so uh, it's, it's really, um, it caters to a lot of different audiences. Right now, we have this message saying that you and your food are safe here. And this shows us that the food temperature is okay. But if it ever, um, you know, too cold or too hot, the screen will will adjust accordingly. So it's very visual. Um, and, you know, this is really a fantastic app. If you are a business who's maybe struggling with food waste, you want a really seamless way to train your employees on what, you know, safe food temperatures are, I would say that this app is a really great solution. All right, any questions on Finian before I jump to Blue Dot? We have one quick one um, related to language. Um, is there a language option, for example, like Spanish um, for a kitchen that might speak that or speak Spanish versus other languages, depending on where you are in the world or what background your staff is from? And it looks like someone maybe had already answered, yes, there are Spanish options available. Um, anything else you want to elaborate on that, um, Priya? Um, I know, I, I, I think Fong, do you know if there's other options available on this? Yeah, one? I think right now we have English available, but um, looking at the, the chat message with Martin, he said that um, there's possibility of um, having other um, options, but uh, right now um, the one that we have displayed with our dashboard is in English. Great, okay. Um, if there's a market for that, you know, we, can, we can talk to, to Finium um their their partners to see if we can build that out awesome yeah great question antonio thank you yeah all right next i can move to blue dot so this is the app that tracks curbside delivery and pickup um, i simulated a tempo event you can see that our customer k is on their way um, this is a very straightforward event that a lot of customers will probably use you want to see you know where the customer is in their journey you can see that this customer left their home at 917. You can also easily see their order ID. But the coolest part of this app is that you can actually update the statuses accordingly. So let's say that K has now arrived. You can press arrived and you get this nice little message beeping. So everyone in the whole restaurant's aware. Um, so it's very visual. And in terms of using this app, there are two requirements. You must have a web or mobile SDK that has location tracking enabled in either your mobile app system or your web ordering system. So obviously you can track where the customer is in their journey. And overall, I just wanna wrap this up and say that this app is immensely beneficial. 
Um, we're living in a post-COVID world where curbside and contactless pickup are still very much a preferred option. So this app can truly revitalize your online ordering system and in just really ensure efficiency to the highest degree possible. So really great integration. All right, any more questions before I jump to employee metrics? So Employee Metrics is the app that is labor compliance focused. So now you can see how beautiful and visual this really is. Um, this app allows you to display employee break times, lunch times, as well as clock in and clock out times. And these are all in abundance with your current state's labor laws. Um, these coffee cups over here indicate break times and these forks indicate when the employee should be taking their meal. Um, within the settings of this app, you can also choose if you wanna hide any of these settings. The green bar um, and the little gray bar here in total determine how long the employee has been there for. And you get a red notification as if, if this meal break was missed. So super visual, I think colors make it really easy to follow. Um, you're able to configure all of this in the settings of your app. And this is a great app for back of house, ideal for businesses that want to ensure that your employees are you know, clocking in on time, um, taking their breaks in accordance with labor laws, and it really helps us improve the way that we think about labor compliance today. Okay, I can jump into my last app, Time Well Scheduled. Okay, so this app is spectacular. This is the scheduling app for employees. So um, after in doing your basic authentication with the company ID and Radian ID, um, you can then create and display custom schedules for the day or for the week you know, you can show who's working today, who's working tomorrow, um, who's absent, do we have any company news? And you can also do this really neat thing called scroll, slow scroll, medium scroll, or fast scroll. Um, obviously, we don't have a lot of content right now, so there's no need for us to do that. But if, let's say you have 30 employees scheduled, scrolling will ensure that all employees can see exactly when they're scheduled um, to show up for their shift. So this is really a great solution to make sure everyone is on the same page for scheduling. Um, this is great if you're just starting your business and just want an effective way to make sure that people know when to show up um, and there's no miscommunication about that, which can sometimes happen. So overall, a really great integration. Amazing. Thank you, Priya, for all the demos. We went through a lot. Um, I'm going to quickly launch our request demo poll. Um, what this is going to do is give you the opportunity to say, yes, I'm excited about some of these apps or want to learn more about Radiant. Um, if you say yes, please, which I'm seeing a lot of you are already doing, awesome. Um, we will send you an email after the event and connect you with someone on our sales team for a personalized walkthrough and demo. But while we're running that run for just another minute or two, we did talk a lot about Streaming TV, we saved a, a very special kind of reveal for the end. And um, we're going to show off Radiant TV, which literally just went live yesterday. So hot off the press. Um, ben is going to demo that for us. So whenever he's ready to get set up, we can start showing that off. But um, again, Radiant TV is our foray into streaming video. Um, we have an amazing curation of content that you can show um, in sequence with other content that you might want to have live at your cafe, at your bar, at your restaurant to entertain guests while they're enjoying their meals or their coffees. And you can splice that or insert other great promotions, like I mentioned. So show a little bit of uh, bits and bites or bevs and bites, if you will, content, show a little bit of Bloomberg news, insert your next happy hour special, whatever it might be. Uh, depending on like the mood, the vibe of your restaurant, you can choose from 10 different content playlists and show that um, in sequence with other messaging. So a really awesome opportunity to think about moving away from maybe a, a cable subscription or other streaming services you might be paying for and consolidating with Radiant. But yeah, I'm gonna let Ben take it from here. Great, thanks Morgan. Uh, as you said, you, you teed me up really well for that. So we're really excited about the launch of our, our Radiant TV. Uh, as you mentioned, uh, uh, our customers are able to choose from 10 different channels showing short form content. So there's really something here for everyone, Bevs and Bites, popular uh, maybe for uh, bakeries or uh, many types of restaurants for this type of content to engage your customers while they're waiting in line, waiting to order perhaps. Uh, but of course, things like travel escapes, providing that that kind of uh, you know beautiful footage 
uh, if I'm maybe sitting down and eating uh, and, and looking at, at, at that type of thing, or just music hits or insider, uh, entertainment insider, just to kind of give me some short form content, something to watch uh, on some kind of contemporary fun themes uh, while I'm uh, enjoying the restaurant. Uh, I've got it muted here just so that you can hear me speak, but obviously you could choose to unmute uh, and, and make that uh, content um, uh, available for everyone to listen to as well. Awesome, I, yeah. I think another environment that we haven't thought about too is like the order pickup. And if you have a lot of people coming in to wait for an item to be ready, maybe you have a kind of hangout area where you want to have some passive content playing. This is another really great place to insert streaming TV alongside some of those other specials or announcements or events happening. Or again, if you have mini TVs in your space and you want to have a mix of programming and entertainment content, maybe you have Airviews playing in one, you have um, a mix of the other streaming TV with Radiant TV in another. Um, at the end of the day, we just have a ton of options for you. So if you haven't yet um, responded to the poll, feel free to keep doing that as we close out and we'll be in touch after the event with more information. All right, um, unless there's anything else uh, from the team here, we are right at the top of the hour, three o'clock here in San Francisco. We went through a ton of content. Um, we recorded this session. We're gonna have a blog post with a recap of all the apps we covered. You can access the recording there as well. It'll be hosted on YouTube. A uh, huge thank you to all of our speakers and presenters, to Fong, to Anthony, to Priya and Ben. Um, couldn't have done this without you. We're excited to have more events just like this, so please stay connected with Radiant, and we will hopefully uh, see you at another event along the way. Like I mentioned, in August, we're going to be focusing even more on employee experience. We're going to be showing off our new mobile app where you can offer safety alerts and communications and shout outs to your restaurant teams. Um, you can run sales contests using point of sale data, um, so much more to come. So join us for that. We'll be sending out an invitation in the next week or so. But again, thanks to everyone. We will see you online soon and have an amazing rest of your day wherever you are in the world. Thanks, everyone.